Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all safe and well. So let me get all the stuff out of the box, lay it out, then we'll check the instructions and see where we go. Here we are with all the parts in front of us. Well, according to the instruction or the assembly manual, we do the wings first, but that to me doesn't quite seem right. It's the wings followed by the horizontal stabiliser. What I think we'll do is we'll whack the wheels on, which is this step here. I won't bother gluing in the stirrups and the aerials, but we'll whack the undercarriage on, keep it in the cradle, and then look at attaching the wings and things. Yeah, let's do that. Let me go and get a cradle. Right, so here we have it on a Robart cradle or stand, aircraft stand. So they basically just slot in there. And then we need four screws and two plates to hold it in place. Now as you can clearly see those plates are different shapes and therefore they go in differently here. So you've got a round plate with a little wedge on it which I think goes that way it's really good these plates again let's focus on this one these plates have these little edges on it and they're chamfered that means this plate can only go in one location and only one way in that location this one happens to be here and the chamfer is this way so that just slots in like that. It's really unusual because they are both different shapes. If I come out, you should clearly see that this one is in fact bigger than this one. Strange design! So this assembly requires two types of screws. The longer screw there are only two of them and the smaller screw there are ten of them. So I'm using a 2mm Allen key type driver. It fits all the screws, they're all the same, 2mm. When you attach the front wheel, it's important that that hook, that top part, fits into here. It's 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert the landing gear from behind and see it come up and engage into that servo arm. Stand, let's see, that's it. So as you can see, that rod of the landing gear, can you see that? It's actually here. The servo here is straight and the rod is halfway through the bar. There are three screw points, two here and one hidden. So we're going to do the back two first, then slowly turn that servo to expose the third. I'm going to do the first one here. Let's do the next one. Now I can get a screw in there. Now to finish it off, I'm just going to go in this way and screw it down. There we are. What I would recommend is that you put a tiny bit of thread lock on the screw and then screw it in. So I'll be adding thread lock to mine a bit later. Yep, that's our undercarriage done. Good as that. Let's see what's next. And the screw that goes in here is the long screw, the 26 millimeter screw. And it, it can move about, so you've got to get things lined up. I had to cut that because what you then have to do is align this up and push that screw down so it drops all the way down. Then you can start screwing it into the brass and the rudders being in the way. Let's try something else. Okay, that seems a better fit. No. Nope. I'm really having trouble getting this in, folks. There we go. Now it says it's important not to over tighten this, and I can feel it getting tighter. And that's going to be about it. Okay, not the best idea in the world, but be gentle with it. Get that screw through the horizontal stabiliser before you start driving it and you'll be okay. That's done. All we've got to do is flip it over and put the push rod in. Now the push rod says it goes on the first holes of everything. I have no idea if it's adjusted correctly. Let's try it. That holds tight. It holds tight for the rod on the clevis. I'm going to make the hole fractionally bigger. I'm putting my blade in there and turning it a couple of times. I'm going to do the same this side. A couple of turns. And we're going to try and reattach it. That is better. Is it level? Probably not. Needs half a turn. Half a turn out. How's that? That's better. 
that's much better this is actually kinked I'm not happy with that I might replace that later and there you go that's connected now that part's done let's turn it over let's take a look at the big cavity in there that is cavernous honestly right let's do a wing let's do a left wing here's our left wing it's already dented from my man handling of it the servo wires are cable tied seems a bit overkill for transportation but there you go they are cable tied be careful when you cut them free squeeze these cables together and slide it off rather than try and cut it. You might have to do a combination of both. Slide it to a place where it's free, then cut it. There we are. So it says gear, and gear's only got a power connection, positive negative, so that's for your light. And you've got your flap. And I've got to make a, an assumption that one that isn't marked flat must be the aileron. And there's a hole here. There's a square hole. What we have here is a wing support, carbon rod support, hole for your servo wires and your back wing connector. Forward wing connector, carbon, servo wires rear wing connector okay so that's gone through and it's come out the other side which is what I want I'm now putting these wires through that servo wire hole and you've got three to thread through it's very easy to do except I'm on camera which makes it very hard to do but there you go and you, once you've got those through you can just grab them and pull them through as you push these in Okay, now you can't really see if they line up, it's a little dark in there, so it's going to have to be a bit of trial and error, push it as far as you can, they're all the same screws, I do think this would be a bit awkward in the field, okay that one went in really well. It up a little bit. Let's try the next one. Front one. Yep, that's gone on really well. But that is that we on. You can use the rods on either wing, they're interchangeable, but what you must do is the smooth curve in the rod needs to go onto the wing and the short kinked end of the rod goes to the fuselage. And then you secure them with R pins and you can put the R pins in any way you like. I tend to put mine in with the circular bit pointing backwards. Now these are tight. There you go. That's one. So the pin is actually quite easy to get in if you do it upright. Push it in and then lie it flat. Trouble is I can't do it on camera. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to cut the cable tie, not cutting the wires. And we have three wires again, the one with gear on 
is in fact your lights. So that's going to go into the fuselage, all those wires, through the provided hole in the plastic mounting. There we are, two screws, that's one, they go in really well, really well, two, so basically now we put the wing rod on, kink bit up this end, the smooth curved bit this end, we need an R clip for here, let's get that in like that for you, push it in, apply it flat, doesn't matter what way, and we do the same up here. And it is easier done this way. There we go. Over the hump, and lie it flat. 